Sonia Allison and Robin Marschalek are heading for work in North Kosovo. They're Germans working for the EU border police in the region. A helicopter takes them to their 48-hour shift on the border between North Kosovo and Serbia. Normally, you get in a car and go to work and start working. Everything's a bit more complicated. The EU pays 4,000 euros an hour for the rented helicopter. Aircraft rather than police cars are used here. Since Kosovo became independent four years ago, an EU mission known as ULEX has been active here. Its aim is to ensure that the rule of law works in the new country. The mission includes police and customs officials. Up to now there hasn't been much to do. There aren't many pedestrians or cars coming over. It sounds like a dream job, but it's actually a sign of tension. Some 30,000 Serbs live along the border. They don't recognize Kosovo as an independent country. The dispute has become increasingly fractious since the summer. Radical Serbs have positioned themselves near the border checkpoint and are deciding who can cross. The officers from the EU aren't allowed over. That's because the Europeans are bringing Kosovan police from the Albanian minority here by helicopter. It's a symbol of support for the Kosovan government and is aimed at showing the Serbs that there is a real border here. But Serbs are unwilling to run the risk of having an ethnic Albanian stamp their passport. No Serbs come into the country this way, not even bus drivers. They wait here along the smuggler's route, just a short distance from the border crossing. We'll cross there again when they take away the container for the customs officers. People cross the border illegally because they don't accept it. Bus drivers drop them off around a kilometer's walk away. I do this every day. You should see when it's cold in the morning. They're forced to do this because radical Serb leaders refuse to accept the border. The Serbian and Kosovan governments have been negotiating with Brussels for months over a solution. The German EU police officer Sonja Allison and her colleagues are caught in the middle. Like this will only ever be sorted politically. You know, the idea of force or anything is just nonsense, um, quite frankly. It, it has to be a political and a, um, a bilateral political solution. Mitrovica, the North Kosovo town with the largest number of ethnic Serbs, is just half an hour away. The bus from the border is headed here. There are many signs indicating that radical Serbs hold Ulex responsible for the situation. There's a barricade on the bridge between the Serbian and Albanian parts of town. Reconciliation seems even further away than Brussels, even after three years of EU operations in the region that have cost more than 400 million euros. It's the EU's biggest foreign mission. But there is now more tension than before, even on the bridge over the Ibar River. An Albanian provokes by trying to cross over to the Serbian side. The police have trouble stopping him. In Kosovo's capital, Pristina, the Albanian-dominated government is also dissatisfied with the results of the ULEX mission. The mission is led by Xavier Budemanak. I don't think that, that the purpose was to be uh, to be extremely popular. We are then there to do a job, which is most of the time, as I said, a painful job. We are trying to do our best to do that, and we are trying to improve the capacity of the local institution. In the north, EU police officer Sonia Allison is trying to check the documents of Serbs on a train from Mitrovica. There are four EU police officers for two cars packed with Serbs who don't accept their authority. Just from the body language, I'd say they're slightly to fairly agitated. Radical Serbs continue to impede the EU officers as they try to get to work, making it clear that success for Brussels' most costly foreign mission is a long way off.